Greetings, dearest friends. We are so excited to be together with you today. My name is Evangelist Herman Clintworth, and I am sitting here with Evangelist Samuel Morumbe, the Crusade Director of In His Name Ministries. We are very excited because today we are going to delve into a chapter that so clearly proclaims the matchless message of salvation. We are going to discuss Isaiah 55. We invite you to be part of this Bible study. Enjoy it and be blessed. Samuel, always wonderful to be with you. This is a, a chapter that we both love preaching on. Um, so let me start off and I'll read the first couple of verses um, and then we can pour out our hearts Amen. to each other. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me here and your soul shall live. I'm getting excited already. I want to do an altar call. <laughs> so maybe we should start off with you. What, what do those first couple of messages mean to you? Wow, this is, this is so you know, significant to me uh, when I look into... Um, into, into the chapter that you have chosen. It's very profound when it comes to salvation mm -hmm. uh, because when we, we look into, I, I, into the verses there, the prophet mm -hmm. starts by announcing mm -hmm. it's actually an invitation yes. to the abundant life. Amen. You know, in my Bible, I, I believe you have the same version <laughs> as mine. I do it actually indeed. says it's an invitation yeah. to the abundant life. Amen. The very life of God. God here is actually inviting all of us to come and receive this precious life, this Amen. abundant life. And when you read about it, it actually says, come. Mm. It speaks three times. The invitation there is yes. three times, come. Yes. And when you go to Revelations chapter number 22, I want to link it up a bit. Yeah. You know, verses number 17. Also, it also says, come. Mm. And it also says three times, wow. come. And uh, this is very significant to me. It is actually one of the greatest uh, things in the Bible. And it blew my mind, yes. Tamarin, when I looked into it. And it actually came to me and it sank into my spirit that this has got to do with the Trinity in the Trinity. Bible. God the Father is saying, come. Jesus is saying, come. The Holy Spirit is saying, come. come. They all are saying, come, 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 come. Wow. It is, it is very, very, very exciting the indeed. The Trinity of heaven inviting it's all of us, out. saying, come to it's salvation. Oh, no, ha hallelujah. hallelujah. And, and what, what I love there as well is uh, the prophet here is saying, come, buy and eat. But then he says, you come without money. That's right. Um, and this I find fascinating. You know, salvation, you cannot buy with money. Not, not all the money in all the world will be able to, to purchase the salvation of a single soul. Exactly. You cannot buy salvation with money. That's we know right. it is free, but still an exchange needs to take place. God requires us to give something to him so he can give salvation to us in return. Amen. And what does he want from us? Our faith. That's right. He wants that profession of belief. That's right. He wants us to say, Jesus, I believe in you. Save me now. Amen. He needs that profession. And as soon as we make that profession, he comes and he saves us. And he gives us that abundant life that we are all craving for, that we are all seeking after. You know, whether, whether we realize it or not, we are all seeking after God. Amen. There is an emptiness in all of us. It's amazing, Terry, because exactly what you're saying, when you look mm -hmm. at verse 2, it says, you know, it says, why do you spend money for what is, uh, for what is not bread? Amen. You know, it speaks about four things there. It yeah. says bread. It says what? Water. Yes. It says wine. Yes. And, um, you know, there are four aspects. And when I looked at them, and I went into the New Testament, I see the four Gospels. Yes, and milk, and milk. And milk, milk is the well. fourth one. Wow. Indeed. So this, this is so amazing. And this, this tells us that the only mm. thing that we can do, like you said, there is no money that we can put no. into, into salvation, into us accepting, you know, that mm. free gift of salvation. The only thing that we can do is 
you know, opening our hearts and putting our faith in the in, in, in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's when you know the, the salvation, the power of salvation begins to explode in our very inner being. Amen. And and that word abundance is so powerful. Yes. And and now the prophet says, incline your ear. Incline your ear, come to God, hear, and your soul shall live. Amen. Um, it, it, that is the gospel. Yes. We have to hear the gospel. Yes. And then we respond to the gospel. That's right. And that's why it's so important for us as believers to share the gospel. That's right. Because people need to hear the message of salvation. That's right. Um, and then they can respond to it. Yes. If they don't hear it, they Rome, won't know that it exists. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing. Hearing. And hearing what? The word of God. Amen. The only way, you know, I am an African. Yes. And um, as an African, you know, I'll give you a bit bit of background, you know, <laughs> uh, where I grew up in the northern part of Mozambique mm -hmm. in Beira. You know, we, we grew up, you know, believing in witch doctors yes. that, you know, they are, the, they, they are the greatest, you know, power of God. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if you are sick, you know, the only thing you knew is to run to the witch doctor. But now, hear this, this is amazing, you know, that in my early days, while mm -hmm. I was still growing up back at home, you know, my, my mother and, you know, and my uncles would always come, you know, my uncle would come and tell my mother that, you know, if your son is sick, I've heard about this witch doctor that is so powerful, is in such a such a place, maybe it's 200 kilometers mm. away from where we are living, and uh, we would actually drive you know, such a long distance. My mother will spend money going there. Mm. She will have money to pay the witch doctor whatever price that was needed in order for her to find help for me or other of our siblings. Wow. So this tells you that faith comes by what? By yes. hearing. It's always in what are you hearing? Yes, yes. And I'm... here the Bible, the prophet is saying, if we incline our ear to the gospel of mm. salvation, our soul is going to receive abundant life. Amen. So your family heard about the witch doctors? Well, we need to go out there and make sure even though they hear about the witch doctors, they hear about Jesus as well. That's right. And they hear that Jesus is more powerful than any witch doctor. That's right. And he's the one they must pick. That's right. Because he is, he is the one true God. Amen. And, uh, Amen. and we cannot inherit eternal life without him. Yes. Without him. Now to verse 6. Verse yes. 6 and verse 7. And, and you know, I love to preach on, on these two verses. I know. That you is know, your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Within these two verses is a, is a gospel message in its entirety. Yeah. Uh, and it starts off and it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Mm -hmm. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon I love so much how it starts, seek the Lord while he may be found. That's right. And this, this might sound confusing because God yes. is everywhere. Yes. You know, how can God go somewhere where we cannot find him? That's right, yes. But, you know, as you know and I know, the, the Bible is not speaking about the Lord going somewhere. The Bible is speaking about us going somewhere. That's right. You know, the fact is we only have a, a short window of time in which we can accept Jesus as our Savior. That is the window of our lives here That's on earth. Right. That's between right. birth and between death. That's right. And if we die and we haven't yet called on Jesus, that's it. Yes. It doesn't matter how much we cry out. Um, the Lord cannot rescue us. Yeah. In, it is too late. In hell, there is no more time for you to call upon the Lord. Yes. You know, the time is now. The time has run out. Still here, this is the right time for us to call upon the Lord. And, and that is, that is a, a humbling concept. That's right. And, and the fact is we don't know when we are going to die. You know, we, we pray uh, for ourselves, we pray for our viewers as well, a long life, lots of children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Right. But, but the fact is we don't know. Yeah. Um, I remember so clearly, it was before we even started working together, so it was That's many right. years back, um, I was having a little tent crusade, a young man received Jesus. I remember him so clearly. He was one of the first to come to the front and accept the Lord. A young man, maybe 19 years old, received the Lord with all of his heart. The, the next day, my team got a call and it was the father of this young man. Yes. And the father said, my young man dropped dead this morning. My son right. died this morning. The doctors didn't know what happened. They said it must have been his heart. And they had no explanation. He was a young man. He was a healthy man. Mm. And, and the father was happy. This was what fascinated me. The father was rejoicing. I, I, I didn't understand it at first. 
And then he explained and he said, my son had turned his back on God. My son was on his way to hell. But because he accepted Jesus, this father said, I know, even though I might not have now more years with my son here on earth, I know he is in heaven and one day I will spend eternity with him. What an this, assurance. This father understood the, the importance of eternity. Yes. This seek the Lord while he may be found is essential. And, yes. and we want to encourage our viewers, if you have not yet called on the name of Jesus yet, call on him because you don't know when your life is going to end, my friend. Do not switch off your TV today, That's not right. knowing where you are going to go when you die. When you go to sleep tonight, let it be with peace, with assurance that Jesus is your savior. And all you need to do to be saved is call on the name of the Lord. Say, Jesus, save me now. That's it. And now, the job is done. You are very right, Evangelist <laughs> Henry. You know, you know the, the exciting part is we all need to know that we only have a window of today. Yeah. Today right. is the day of salvation. Amen. We are not guaranteed the next minute. No. We are not guaranteed the next second. No. Today is the day of salvation. Yeah. So what, what Evangelist Temrin is saying is very right. Yeah. Viewers, Amen. wherever you are, and uh, if you Amen. hear us under the sound of our voices, yeah. this is the time of salvation. And how do you receive salvation? Just call upon that name. Amen. That name, that wonderful name, that matchless name, that most powerful Amen. name, when you call upon that name, that name has the power to save you, to deliver you, and to change you forever. Amen. I know. I have a little <laughs> testimony. In a while, in the, in the yes. next episodes or so, yes. you are going to hear more about my own personal life, you know, yes. and what Jesus has done. Tembrin also has a testimony. Yes. I have a testimony too. <laughs> and I know that, you know, you cannot fight what God has done already Amen. in our lives. Amen. 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 <laughs> and we, we carry on there, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Yes. Let him return to the Lord. And, you know, and that is calling on the name of Jesus. It is, right. it is turning your back on the devil yes. and turning your face to God That's right. and saying, God, I need you now. Save my soul. That's right. And as, as we know, sin, Sam, sin separates us from God. It does. We know it has got nothing to do with God's love for us. He loves us with such a great passion. Yes. But sin is complete opposite to holiness. Yes. And God is a holy God. So sin and holiness cannot live together. Yes. And that's why if there's sin in us, even though God wants to come and live in us here on earth, he cannot. The sin yes. pushes him out. Yes. Even though he wants us in heaven one day when we die, we cannot go there because the sin pushes us out of his presence. Of his presence. So this let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. This is speaking about repentance. That's right. This is saying, Jesus, I need you to save me from my sin. Yes. I turn my back on my sin. That's right. And I turn to you. Save me now. It is so simple, but it is so beautiful. And then it carries on and it gives a guarantee. Our Lord will have mercy on us. Right. Our God will abundantly pardon. And I love this. It does not say God might, no. you know, if he's in a good mood, if he's having a good day, if, we, if we approach him from the right angle with God, there's no angles. He knows us. He sees us. He knows every thought that we've ever thought. He knows every act we have ever done. That's very right. He knows who we are. Nothing is hidden before him. Nothing. Nothing. We, we are actual as naked as we can be yeah. before the presence of yeah. the Lord. He yeah. sees everything that yeah. is in us. And um, Evangelist, you are very right there. Yeah. And uh, one of the one of the greatest depths that I find in that, mm. it is the sincerity of your repentance. Yes. Um, if you look, you know, if one, in one of the Gospels, you know, uh, the man called Zacchaeus. Yes. You know, the man very short. You we know. love Zacchaeus. Um, what, I like, <laughs> what I like about, you know, is Jesus had already seen, you know, the repented heart yeah. of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, even though he was short, he climbed, you know, the sycamore yes. tree. But Already in his heart, he had already believed that Jesus is the only Savior. Yeah. He is the only one. Despiteful of what other people looked at, you know, when they looked at Zacchaeus, they saw a crook. Yes. They saw, you know, uh, someone who robs other people, yes. you know, who, who steals the texts from yes. other people. But yet Jesus, when he looked mm -hmm. at him, he looked at him through the heart of repentance. Amen. And when we repent, truly you know, from the depth of our hearts, 
Jesus sees that. Amen. And the Bible gives assurance. Here the prophet, I think yes. he was foreseeing the New Testament. Amen. And he Definitely. was foreseeing the New Testament. He said, you know, when we repent, it is a guaranteed Amen. thing. Our God will surely, surely pardon us. Amen. He will surely forgive us. Amen. He will surely wash away our sins. Amen. And he will not do what other people do, no. uh, Temrin. No. You know, people will say, you know, uh, a leopard does not change its spots, <laughs> you know. Uh, if you were once a gangster yes. or you were a criminal, you know, they will always, even if you are in the church, yes, you, can't you are trust already him. forgiven. They will never He's another trust Judas. You. They say, no, <laughs> this is another Judas Iscariot. <laughs> you know, he's just hiding himself yes. with the Bible. Jesus <laughs> saves and he completely transforms. And, That's right. and this is so encouraging. And it's, a, it's an encouragement for our viewers. That's you right. know, re regardless what you have done, it, it might be such a horrendous sin it might be something that makes you feel so black and so dirty and so broken it does not matter how extreme your sin is the blood of jesus is more extreme and more powerful amen and all you need to do is call on the name of the lord amen. and and your salvation is completely guaranteed That's right. you know the the next couple of verses i've heard so many sermons preached on these next verses but but surprisingly few in context you know we read verse 8 for my thoughts are not your thoughts mm -hmm. nor are your ways my ways says the lord yes. for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts That's now right. if if you read it just after what we have just read about god pardoning this this he is addressing to the sinner he is saying to the sinner wow. you might think you are too sinful. You might think you have done too many awful things. You might think you are beyond salvation. People might be judging you. They might be condemning you. That's they right. might say that you have gone, gone beyond the point of repentance. That's While right. God says to you, his thoughts are not like the thoughts of wow. man. And his ways are not like the ways of man. Temrin, he wants to say. Temrin, I'm actually getting excited <laughs> about this whole thing. You, know? you are bringing the way, you know, in such an amazing way it's like you know you read exactly what is in my spirit Amen. you know actually what the picture that i saw when we read about what we read and the the next verse you know mm. on verse number eight my thoughts uh verse number eight my thoughts are not, are your, not thoughts. your thoughts you know tell me it's amazing that you know we people are so quick to judge people yeah. and to even give them you know a death sentence and yes. say to them it is beyond repair yes. you know you cannot you cannot be saved anymore yes. i mean even me i'm a human being you know there are certain people who are you know when i look at what they are doing today you know the rape the murderer and all those kind of things i sometimes you know the thought comes to me that mm. this one is beyond repair you are too far gone. but yet guess what the bible here says god's thoughts are not men's thoughts Amen. Actually, the people whom we say, you know, there is no hope for them. God yeah. says, if they turn to me, there yes. is hope for them. Yes. If they come to me, I will surely pardon them and Amen. I will forgive their sins. And I will not, their sins I will remember no more. Amen. And so often believers, they, they want to bring up the past before the Lord. That's right. You know, and I think the Lord wants to say to them, but, but, but I don't even remember that. You know, why are you bringing it, bringing it up? I don't you are know. new. You are clean. That's right. let's, new, let's move forward. Let's stop looking into the past. That's right. And we are new creations. Yes. We move forward. And, and the testimony that God can bring somebody who has really been in the darkness and now who has come into the light, yes. that testimony has got such power. Um, I mean, you always share your testimony at our crusades. That's right. You were in darkness. The Lord brought you into the light. Yes. Uh, and now you make the devil sorry that he ever picked on you. I am actually, you know, whatever that I do today, the drive that makes me to do whatever that I'm doing, oh. it is because I know that God is a forgiving God. Amen. I know that God is a loving God. Yeah. You, are, you are looking at me now <laughs> and you are saying, you are wondering, you know, mm. evangelist, you know, you don't know what I'm going through. <laughs> 
I'm here to tell you that, uh, listen to me, my friend. Mm. If you can put your faith mm. in what Christ has done at the cross of Calvary, if you believe in the word of God mm. and you receive what the Bible says about salvation, mm. I promise you that you will be saved and you will be forgiven and God will remember your sins no more. Amen. Many people, they, use, they ask me this question, Temi. They say, Samuel, do you sometimes remember what you did in the past? I said, not at all, <laughs> because I am no longer the, the old person. Amen. I am now a new person in Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, the oldest pastor, the Bible says, whosoever joins himself to Christ is a, a new, new creation. creation. And the old has passed away. Yes. And behold, the new has now begun. Yes. I am now a new born again believer in Christ. Amen. I am a child of God. I do not allow the things yeah. of the past to hold me back. Amen. I'm on my way to heaven. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Huh? And, and you know, it, it, it's sometimes we, we must really understand the power that is in the blood of Jesus. That's right. You know, if we really understand the power, we understand that when that blood washes us clean, we are clean. That's right. We are spotless. We are righteous. We become the righteousness of God, yes. you know, by by thinking that one's sins are, are too much to be washed away by the blood of Jesus, we are undermining the value yes. that is in the blood. I mean, the, the concept of the blood of Jesus, it absolutely overwhelms me. The, the fact that Jesus came to earth, God became man, the blood of God ran through the veins right. of Christ. Yes. It, 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 is, it, it blows the mind and the power of that blood that can get get the job done. That's Doesn't right. matter the, the past, the drama, uh, the mistakes, the regrets. That blood can get the job done, make us new creations so we can move forward and be used by God to bring glory to his name and help other people also realize that there is power in the blood of Jesus. And if they call on his name, they too will become children of God and receive this abundant life. Wow. This abundant life. You know, verse, verse 3, I just want to bounce back there quickly. Um, Hear and your soul shall live. That's right. Before you accept Jesus as Savior on the inside, you are dead. You are rotting. That's right. It is by accepting Jesus that you become alive, that you can truly become the person that God created you to be. Amen. And, and that we want for every one of our viewers. That's right. Um, for, that's right. And, that, and that's what God wants for everybody he ever created. He, he yearns for that for them. If they would but yes. call on his name, he yearns, he, he weeps over them. It is so amazing, Tamrin, you know, what, what you are just saying here. You're speaking, mm -hmm. you actually bounced into a scripture that was just, you know, um, dancing in my spirit, you know. And um, that verse 3 is very powerful. Yeah. Um, when it says, you know, incline your ear and come to me. Yes. And hear and your soul shall, shall live. live. It actually says your soul yes. shall live. And yes. uh, while I was reading this and uh, while I was going through it, yeah. I actually bounced over to Matthew chapter 11 verses from okay. verses 28. Jesus making another invitation, you know, mm. to, the, to the sinners. He says, come to me, all of you who are weary yes. and all that. And when you read further, it actually says, your, so that you may find rest in your souls. Your soul. Rest in your souls. Yes. And I believe, viewers, that, you know, yeah. that a, a soul of man, someone said, a soul of man is so big that it is only God who can feel it. <laughs> That's very good. That's it's spot only on. God who can feel a soul of okay. man. Not, not money, not drugs, not, not women, nothing. not men. Not, not the perfect career, not fame, nothing Look but at God. Me, viewer, I tried it all. <laughs> I used to be in the depth and in the deep of the mud of sin. And I tried drugsing it. Mm. I tried drinking it out. I tried smoking it out. I tried doing whatever that I could. Yeah. But there was still this vacuum yes. in my spirit, in my heart, in my soul. And only Jesus was able to fill it up. Amen. Even prison was not able to fill it up. <laughs> Only Jesus was able to fill it up. Tell A me, amen. this is exciting. It is very exciting, wow. Sam. And you know, and then if we carry on there, verse 11 says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. Mm. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. And this for me is an encouragement 
to someone who is already a believer that they should preach the gospel, That's right. that they should share about Jesus. Amen. Because this gospel message, this, this is the heart of God. That's right. When they share it, that is the word of God that they are sharing. That's and that right. word will not return to God void. It shall accomplish. Amen. That is why we have to witness. That is why we have to share about yes. Jesus. Even if some people are tough, and it takes a long time, be assured that that word is penetrating, that word is, is getting to work. And eventually, eventually after this one witnesses and that one witnesses, it will get the job done. You know, Isaiah 55 is one of my favorites and I can see again why, why it is one of my favorites. I know it is, it is yours as well. Yeah. And I just want to encourage our viewers, those of you who are not yet saved, Call on the name of the Lord. It is not a complicated prayer. All you need to do even right now is say, Jesus, save me. It is as simple as that. And my friend, he will come. He will wash you clean on the inside. Connect with us. The contact details are on the screen. I invite you to follow me on Facebook, on Twitter. Have a little conversation with me there as well. Tell me how this conversation has, has impacted you. God bless you. Until next time.